So um, I'm just briefly going to give an overview of, of where we are now in Amazon text-to-speech. Um, in, in the latest work we're doing on making Alexa sound more natural and human when we communicate with um, engaging AI. And if we look at the topics that I'm going to talk about in this brief presentation, I'm going to divide into four sections. There's uh, naturalness, expressivity, semantically aware synthesis, and what's called always getting better, which is about context-aware synthesis. So I'm going to go to each of these in a little bit more detail throughout the presentation, but it's going to be a bit of a whistle-stop tour of where we are with TTS at the moment. So if we take a little bit of a, a background to this, well, before 2016 or so, there were two approaches to doing synthesis. There were statistical parametric synthesis methods, and these were very flexible. Uh, different types of prosody could be applied, but they lacked the naturalness in terms of segmental quality, audio quality that a human being is capable of. And then you had the other set of, of synthesis systems called unit selection or unit selection hybrid, TTS systems. And these could achieve very high naturalness, but were very constrained in the type of, of uh, synthesis they could produce or the level of expressivity they could, give, they could produce. And, and what was needed was something that could take us up this diagonal path to, to, to closer to what human beings are able to achieve. And as I mentioned, this appeared to happen in, in 2016 and around that time when the neural models, for example, WaveNet, first started to appear. And they seem to offer us the opportunity to, to move up this diagonal to make both flexibility and naturalness part of our TTS solutions. So I'll just summarize what the components of a TTS system are um, very briefly. Of course, it's, it, it's commonly believed that there are three overall categories that can be, it can be broken into text analysis, takes some form of text representation in and creates uh, linguistic features from this. And these linguistic features are used throughout the remainder of the synthesis system to generate prosody models. And the prosody models then uh, with the linguistic features are pushed into the speech synthesizer to generate synthetic audio. Now, um, all these components have been either completely replaced or have been significantly modified by neural technologies. In, in this extreme, you have the end-to-end uh, -end systems where you put text in, you have a neural model, and you have speech out. These end-to-end these -end systems are um, very promising, but they, they have the difficulty that it's very difficult to dig in and find out why the model did what it did. So for some practical reasons, it's, it's often nicer to be able to factorize these into these different blocks still so that you can dig in and understand why one particular model was doing something and maybe correct that. And this is, of course, important for any production system. So there are two different approaches. Um, they both have their pros and cons. So let's talk about what we're doing in terms of neural modeling and, and the overall approach that we're taking that, that you'll see is applied typically to all the things I'm going to talk about. So the, the basic idea is that you have uh, two neural systems. One on the left-hand side represented by prosody generation takes in the textual information and consumes that uh, and generates an intermediate representation. And uh, the intermediate representation that is most commonly used is, is a MEL spectrogram, a predicted MEL spectrogram. And this, this predicted spectrogram is then passed into another neural model, in this case, the universal neural vocoder, that then attempts to synthesize from this predicted spectrogram a uh, human-like uh, audio signal. So that, that's the, the general approach. Now, if we dig in a little bit more to the way uh, that we do the uh, representation to the intermediate uh, MEL spectrogram. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an encoder-decoder model. Uh, these, are, these are quite commonly used now, and there are different approaches to it, but sequence-to-sequence -sequence modeling is one of the most common. And, and the basic idea here is that you'll have uh, an encoder that will consume knowledge, uh, create some form of embedded vector, that, that this will be sent through to the decoder, which will then iteratively uh, uh, expand it out to, to the representation that it wants to create. So a sequence to sequence. Of course, there is the uh, additional um, property of adding in attention. Attention um, helps the decoder understand how to move forward, which, which property to give a particular attention to. 
and it's a uh, attention has now been recognized as one of the things that are needed to make these models work effectively so that's that's a that's an additional nuance to, to the basic model and this is going to be our workhorse for for all the things that we're going to talk about in, in the following slides so let's talk a little bit about um where we are so previously of course we used uh, competitive systems uh, they were very com uh, competitive um so let's play what our best concassive system sounds like. Introducing Amazon's first custom electric delivery vehicle. Amazon has revealed its first custom electric delivery vehicle, designed and built in partnership with Rivian, and expects to have 10,000 of the new vans on the road delivering to customers as early as 2022. So that's our, our concassive system. And now let's see how that sounds when we use a neural model to generate the same phrase. Introducing Amazon's first custom electric delivery vehicle. Amazon has revealed its first custom electric delivery vehicle, designed and built in partnership with Rivian, and expects to have 10,000 of the new vans on the road delivering to customers as early as 2022. Okay, so neural text-to-speech systems have allowed us to generate sounds that are smoother um, and more consistent than our concassive systems, but they still sound very similar. What we need to do now with these models is demonstrate that we can put expressive text-to-speech system into these technologies. And that's what I'm going to talk about now, how to add expressivity into text-to-speech synthesis. Again, we're going to look at the same type of model, but here we're going to add in another element to the attention. In this case, we're going to add in style. So not only are we going to have recordings that are neutral in style, we're going to and in, during training, recordings that express a particular speaking style. And the one we chose initially was Newscaster as a style that people would recognize as a, as a very distinct uh, from neutral style and also very pacey. How do we do this? Okay, so we mixed in different styles and we labeled uh, the Newscaster style as a particular style. Um, and then we hoped that the system would learn to be able to discriminate between the two. Uh, once we've trained it for synthesis, we would pass in a style ID and the system would append this to the attention mechanism, give an extra cue to the decoder to hopefully help it synthesize in a way that expresses that style. So again, if we pay, play samples here, if we play the uh, neural neutral style again. Introducing Amazon's first custom electric delivery vehicle. Amazon has revealed its first custom electric delivery vehicle designed and built in partnership with Rivian, and expects to have 10,000 of the new vans on the road delivering to customers as early as 2022. And now we compare it with our style-driven synthesis. Introducing Amazon's first custom electric delivery vehicle. Amazon has revealed its first custom electric delivery vehicle, designed and built in partnership with Rivian, and expects to have 10,000 of the new vans on the road delivering to customers as early as 2022. Okay, so hopefully you can hear that the newscaster style is more pacey and more representative of what a person would expect a newscaster to sound like. So moving on from this, what about emotions? How can we add emotions into synthesis as well as style? So we've looked at ways of using disentanglement to allow us to add emotions as well as style properties to speech synthesis. So if we play a neutral style. I am playing a single hand in what looks like a losing game. By moving through a space of uh, embeddings, we can express highly excited styles. I'm playing a single hand in what looks like a losing game. To highly disappointed styles. I'm playing a single hand in what looks like a losing game. Or anything in between. And by, so, by doing so, we, we also keep the naturalness that we want to, to hear from these neural models. Okay, so we've talked about style and emotion. And now I want to talk about semantically aware. In other words, we want to add into the synthesis system the ability to be able to interpret the text. So some of the intentions of the author comes through when we're synthesizing. So it's not just covering the style. We're also trying now to get some word sense in there by applying natural language processing techniques to our system. And if I play this through, you'll see again, it's the same sort of broad scope of the structure that we've applied before. But here we're now trying to include word sensor, a, a language modeling into this to again help the attention model understand how much um, in, in terms of the language you would expect particular words 
and phrases to be given certain weight. And then from this, uh, to be able to help the decoder emphasize particular words in a particular way. So we, we, we believe that such an approach is, is important, particularly for what we call longer form reading, where you've got an extensive material, maybe uh, multiple paragraphs, that it will give the reader a sense of being able to listen and feel that the system is, is really understanding what it's speaking. So again, if we, if we look at the newscaster style, which is a very expressive style. Introducing Amazon's first custom electric delivery vehicle. Amazon has revealed its first custom electric delivery vehicle, designed and built in partnership with Rivian, and expects to have 10,000 of the new vans on the road delivering to customers as early as 2022. And now let's compare it with our long form approach, which isn't as dynamic, but hopefully would allow a reader to listen to a longer passage of material. Introducing Amazon's first custom electric delivery vehicle. Amazon has revealed its first custom electric delivery vehicle, designed and built in partnership with Rivian, and expects to have 10,000 of the new vans on the road delivering to customers as early as 2022. Okay, so we've talked about naturalness, expressivity, and adding in semantic knowledge into text. But now I want to talk about making the system aware of its context, adapting to the reasons that it's saying in a dialogue, in a discourse. So taking into consideration the uh, intentions of the dialogue systems and the emotions and feelings of the interlocutor. And to do this, we're, we're just starting to develop such systems. But here is a graph to demonstrate what we're doing. And, it, and you'll recognize elements of it already uh, from what was in the previous slide. But if we take an Alexa skill, what we want to be able to do is, is take an, a generic response like hello and be able to rephrase that in a way that makes it more dynamic. So for example, hi, how can I help you? Or, or some other different variant that reflects the intentions of the skill um, and, and different parts of the dialogue to reflect the, the previous response from the user so that we, we give the, the um, application a sense of, of listening and adapting to, to what was spoken previously. And then of course, you, the language we use is only part of it. So if we want to say something that is very uh, excited, that's fantastic. You, you, know, you need to marry the word fantastic with the level of voice expressivity. That's fantastic. So um, we need to change the way we speak to reflect the intention and the word usage. And for that, we have a, a spoken language model uh, similar to what we said before, where now we're adding in uh, knowledge about the application, knowledge about the state, knowledge about the intention, and, and giving this to the attention mechanism, again, to help select different styles, and different uh, levels of prominence, um, and different uh, emotional states to reflect where the application feels it is, in, in, the, in the discourse. So let's let's listen to an example where we just play uh, a static neutral response. Very happy to help. Let's find something you like on Amazon Music. How about something from the 80s? Does that work? And now if we apply the, the technology which is trying to be context aware. Very happy to help. Let's find something you like on Amazon Music. How about something from the 80s? Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi. Does that work? Okay, so that's an o a very quick overview of where we are with the text-to-speech system. And now I'll hand it over to my colleague, Xiao, who will tell you about acoustic event detection.